it's time to compare the pieces I just made with vacuum infusion compared to the ones from uh, being laid up with a brush and a roller and some of them have gel coat, some of them don't. So, first off I'll start off from the thinnest. This is the piece from, you know, made with a brush and it's got no gel coat. Okay, brush, no gel coat, no roller. It weighs eight grams. Right, don't know if you can see that, but just trust me, it weighs eight grams. Here I'll turn it this way, just in case you guys can actually see that stuff. Eight grams. Okay. This one was just made vacuum infused. Um, no gel coat. None of the none of the vacuum infused ones had the gel coat just now. Eight grams. Okay. Same weight. Same weight. Look at the size difference. Almost pretty much about twice the size, same weight. Okay. Thickness wise. Alright, this one. 0 0.8 millimeters. This one. 0 0.3 millimeters. Okay. Both a single sheet of 160 gram carbon. Okay, this one is flexible. It's flexible. It's very flexible. This one is a million times more flexible because it's so much thinner, um, and it would be great for doing things like this. Like if you have something along these lines, just a tissue box, whatever. But you know, easily you can bend it across there without any worry. I mean, it will bend way more than that. You can just go ahead and bend this right over, no problem. Okay. Both of these have uh, one 160 gram sheet of carbon on top and bottom and a 450 gram per square meter fiberglass um, just random strand mat. What's it called? Continuous strand mat or something. It's just basically like a random swirly shape. Alright. Um, off the top straight away I can tell you that the one that was made with a brush and the gel coat is at least twice as heavy even though they're about exactly the same size okay about exactly the same size so now this is the one made with a brush and it has gel coat 42 grams this was vacuum infused um, no gel coat 21 grams, okay? Half the weight. Half the weight, same materials, okay? In terms of stiffness, this one is very stiff because of the thickness. This one is not so stiff. And let's check the thickness. I'll do it this order. Um, this is the brushed on piece, 2.7 millimeters. Vacuum infused, 1.1 millimeters. Okay, so there are benefits that it's thinner, lighter. Benefit of this is it's stiffer due to the increased thickness, but it's only increased thickness because of the increased amount of resin, okay, which can crack. Next, what am I going to show you? Okay, let's get into some heavier pieces. This piece was made it is five sheets of carbon, 160 grams, epoxy resin, it is um, gel coat sprayed on, epoxy resin gel coat sprayed on, and you know just made with a brush and a roller. This weighs 44 grams This is a bigger piece. I'll explain this uh, dry patch later. This is a bigger piece. Okay, you can see the size difference. So uh, you can see the size difference. Perhaps an extra 50% bigger. It is vacuum infused, mainly because I didn't want to waste the material, so I just I did it like this. I, did, I left it big, bigger. Um, it is vacuum infused. 
five sheets on both. Um, again, epoxy resin, no gel coat. 25 grams, okay. It's much lighter, even though it's much bigger. 44 compared to 25. Again, the stiffness will suffer. This will be, this is extremely stiff. I mean, that's pretty stiff. This is not so stiff. Not so stiff. Pretty flexible, actually. But it's flexible, but it's safe to flex it. It's safe to bend it. It's not going to crack so much. Well, it's not going to crack as soon as something made in this way of this thickness would crack. Now, here is a piece which is vacuum infused, no gel coat, epoxy resin again, of course, 11 sheets of 160 gram carbon. So, how much is this way? 43 grams. Okay, so where's the other sheet? Again, even though it's bigger, as you can see, even though the infused part is bigger than this one, this one has 11 sheets of carbon, this one has 5 sh sheets of carbon, this one is still like a gram lighter. 42, 44, yeah. So, the thickness, thickness wise, this ought to be interesting. By the way, I haven't done this before, I'm just going through them. 2.8 millimeters for this one, five sheets. And this one's not so, okay, there, I'll pick this spot, seems to be the thickest part. 2.2 millimeters, okay. 11 sheets, five sheets, this one is 2.2, that, that was what, 2.8 or something? The one that was made with a brush. So this is thinner still and lighter even though it's got way more sheets and it's slightly bigger. In terms of stiffness, I'll try and do this uh, show as well as I can. Okay, This one, pretty damn stiff. The brush on part, very stiff. The part made with a vacuum pump, holy crap, that's unbelievable. I can hardly get that to bend at all. I mean, you can see that pretty much nothing's happening. <sighs> okay, that that's like wow. I've uh, yet I haven't encountered something like this. Uh, now I've got a couple of sheets of fiberglass to show you. This is. I'll start off with this. Remember this awesome, the awesome sheet. Uh, from memory and from the way it looks, it is one one sheet of 450 fiberglass. Um, pretty flexible. Even across this way, pretty flexible. Yeah, that's rather flexible, but um, very thick. This thing is damn thick. I mean, here I'll measure it. At some point, I'll measure it at a couple of points just to show, give you a rough idea. 2.4 mil, 2.9 mil, 2.6 mil, 2.1 mil. Okay, so it varies because it's just brushed on. Can I get a reflection? Yeah, you see that? It's got high and low bits. This is a single sheet of that same material, 450 gram per square meter fiberglass, vacuum infused, no gel coat. It is, I mean, that's way more flexible than the other one, way more flexible. Um, and the thickness is 0.6. So the consistency here, obviously, being, um, can you? can't really get a reflection of this material because of the way it's made but I mean it's only a fraction of the thickness and much more flexible if that's what you need which I do actually for for those boot molds um, so those things will come in handy now this interestingly enough uh, I've made 
I forgot to cut this in half, but this one has three sheets of the 450 fiberglass and this one has five sheets, okay? Um, let's see the thickness. 1.8, let's see the 2.3, okay? This fiberglass, about two millimeters roughly. Yeah, two millimeters. How did that? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. The reason I got 2.3 before is because the edge here didn't have this film. Anyway, but yeah, it's about two millimeters, okay? This one's two mil. This one is generally much thicker. But let's test the flexibility. This one has five sheets, that one has one sheet, and it's still a little bit thinner. See that? Pretty stiff. Pretty stiff, okay? This, much easier to bend, okay? Much easier to bend. So, you know, there are applications for fiberglass when strength isn't all that important. I mean, they make boats out of fiberglass and so forth. If, you know, depends on your application, I suppose, but um, vacuum infused, as you've just seen, um, it's much lighter. It means you can, well, it's much lighter, so that's a bonus in many ways. Um, if you can allow for a certain weight limit, you can pack a lot more material in, much less resin, so it's less prone to cracking. One more benefit. One more benefit of uh, vacuum infusion, because of the release films, I'll show you in another video. I didn't film when I released these bits, maybe I should have, but I didn't. When, well of course I should have. <laughs> I had a friend here and I was in a hurry, I just wanted to get this stuff off and, and experiment with it. So, next video I'll show you. One good thing about this is, it's left with a very sort of even and like a, a very nice flat surface and it's rather rough. You can go and you don't need to sand this. You can just lay up more resin on this and lay down more material on it and it will stick. It will stick because the area is already very rough. I mean, you probably couldn't get better than this even if you tried to sand it because um, that, that is just totally awesome. Compare this piece. Oh, I'll go grab a carbon piece. It'll be easier to see. See there? That's a piece that's just laid up with a brush and a roller. Okay? It's nice, but you couldn't really stick anything to this. It's too shiny. Um, if, you, if you laid up more resin over this, it would just pop off. Okay, it wouldn't stick. You'd need to sand the hell out of this. And then you could apply something else on. Whereas a piece like this... You can see the difference there, okay? This is good to, to bond to. This is not. Just one more thing. Um, this part with five sheets of 450 gram glass, okay, it's pretty flexible and it's about two millimeters. This is carbon that's 1.68, 1.7 millimeters basically, and is far more rigid. Okay, just a comparison between the two materials. So if this was two mil I don't have a piece that's I don't have glass and and um fiberglass that are made the same in same thickness but that's uh, as close as I can get. I mean the glass is thicker and it's more flexible. Hmm. And another thing, an interesting effect I've just noticed. Can you see these little white bits? What that is is inside the resin as I was bending this, the fiberglass was separating from from the resin inside it, which is actually weakening it. Okay, so you can see those bits are now the fibers and the resin are no longer bonded, so that will just become weaker and weaker. That's the first time I've seen that because in carbon fiber, as I've tried doing these things. So I've tried doing this in carbon fiber, I've never seen that. So, again, when you have fiberglass inside the bonnet or things like that, in the middle of two pieces of carbon fiber, I'm guessing that will happen if you bend it 